Hi dear students, today we are going to see one of the most important topic in Indo. If you go and check last three years paper of your NEET and INSTIT examination, at least one question came from this topic. Can you able to guess the topic? Yes, you are right. The topic is Regenerative Endodontics. So important topic. So throughout the world, there are many research work which is going on this topic. Examiners, Eagle's view is on this topic. Definitely you can expect at least one or two questions for your upcoming exams also. Please concentrate and start with the regenerative endodontics. You have to know four important terminologies. So what are those four important terminologies? Number one, regeneration. Number two, repair. Number three, revitalization. And number four, revascularization. So we have to know the differentiate between regeneration and repair, revitalization and revascularization. First we will say about what is the difference between regeneration and repair. Regeneration is restoration of the tissue, restore of the tissue, especially the damaged tissue is a restore, I mean it come back with same architecture and function. So this is what called as regeneration and what is called repair then? Repair is also restore the damaged tissue but there are some structural deorganization mean it does not create the original architecture of the tissue. This is the first difference. Second difference the function is not come back in repair. The third difference scar tissue is form only in repair. Scar tissue does not happen in regeneration. So this is the difference between regeneration and repair to give you the best example for the regeneration repair is I just taken a lower vertebra like lizard. Just if you watch this the leg part is cut down here but later on the same architecture and function is replaced here. So it is the best example for your regeneration. If you take a higher animals like mammals, like your human beings, suppose if you cut down the liver because of some alcoholic injury or some injurious agent or some infectious agent, okay, if the liver is damaged, you just cut down the liver, but this liver, the liver which is the healthy part, which is regenerate and making the new tissue, okay, making the new tissue like this with the same architecture and function. This is an example for regeneration. But remember, during the time of regeneration, in case of any continuous injury occur, regeneration doesn't happen. So this is the best example for regeneration I can able to give it to you. And the second is about revitalization and revascularization. What is the meaning of revitalization? As the name says, vitalization in growth of the vital tissue that is called as revitalization but it doesn't resemble the normal original lost tissue that is what called as revitalization. Revascularization is restoration of the vascular in the particular tissue or organ which is called as revascularization. Now you know what are the four terminologies and to start with the history so in a short description and it's all started with the 1961. Okay, there is a famous scientist. You know him. He's called as Nygaard Asby. He given a hypothesis. So what is this hypothesis? So for any area or any organ, okay, if there is any clot formation, this clot which need helps for the healing purpose. The same thing. He applied in the dentistry also. So this is what about Nygaard Aspi. And anything about he, you heard about Nygaard Aspi? Yes, yes, you are right. Nygaard Aspi is the person who given one of the irrigating solution called as EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid which is a chelating agent. So he also given this hypothesis in 1961 and later on in 1966. Two important persons who called as a rule and winter, they give a double antibiotic paste. So, which is we are going to see in the later part. 1993, triple antibiotic paste was introduced. Paste was introduced for the regenerative purpose. And in case of the 2001, 
there is a scientist called as Vaya and he introduced intracanal bleeding procedure right and 2004 the scientists were called as Banch and Troop they submitted a case report for the revascularization related to immature mandibular premolar so these are some of the important personalities which you have to know related to the procedure called as regenerative neurotics very occasionally they are asking the names related to the procedures and topics right to start with the, the case selection is remember the word non vital non vital immature apex right what is the meaning of immature it's called as open apex the root is not yet completely developed so for those cases especially if it is a non vital for a vital you can go for apexogenesis for a non vital traditionally they went for a procedure which is called as apexification what is this apexification to apexification just create a just create a calcified barrier if this is the open apex they just create a calcified barrier in the apex okay but regenerative anodontics is one step ahead it causes increased length of the root it causes increased length of the root the increased thickening of the root and in some cases it may causes vitalization also so this is what about the regenerative anodontics so regenerative anodontics is one step higher than your apexification right what are the goals of the regenerative anodontics for an every dentist the goals of the regenerative anodontics is divided into primary secondary and tertiary the primary goal is so i told you this is a case of non vital so the patient may have symptoms related to the tooth so the primary goal for the regenerative anodontics is elimination of the symptoms elimination of the symptoms once it controls the symptom in a periapical re uh, region and it helps for the bone healing it helps for the bone healing right coming to the secondary goal it causes increased root wall thickness and the length of the root both thickness and length of the root is increased as a secondary goal tertiary goal tertiary goal is not fulfilled in all the cases but few cases which give positive response to the vitality positive response to the vital mean that non vital teeth which may convert it into vital so that is so advantageous in regenerative endodontics right so these are the primary goal secondary goal and tertiary goal in case of the regenerative endodontics right for a regenerative endodontics what are the things i need for the regenerative endodontics i need three components the first component which is called a stem cell the second component which is called as growth factor and the third component which is called as scaffold right first i will start with the stem cells what is the stem cells remember the word stem cells are undifferentiated cells stem cells are undifferentiated cells which can differentiated into many type of cells so that is what called as stem cells how do you classify the stem cells the first classification is it's just classified into totipotent pluripotent and multipotent what is the difference between these three totipotent totipotent stem cells are can be differentiated into any type of cells in the body that is called as totipotent so usually if you take an embryo of just one to three days if we just take one to three days of the embryo these are rich in totipotent stem cells that can like transform into hand or liver or uh, tongue or any type of cells right what is called as pluripotent pluripotent stem cells also differentiate into many type of cells up to 200 different types 200 different types if you take the embryo between 5 to 14 days these are rich in pluripotent stem cells 
and the multipotent. Multipotent as the name says multi, right? These stem cells also can be differentiated into multiple types, but not like a your pluripotent stem cells. So this is one way of classifying the stem cells. The second way to classify the stem cells is number one autologous, allogenic, xenogenic. What is the meaning of autologous? Autologous is these stem cells are transfer into the same individual where you take in the stem cell. This is called as autologous. All right. So mean if the stem cell is taken from my cell, okay, and the stem cells which is later part, okay. In my future, the stem cells which is again re-implanted to my cell. This is called as autologous stem cell. Number two, allogenic. Allogenic is the stem cells which is transfer into same species. So that is called as allogenic. The best example I can give is blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is the best example for allogenic. And the third one which is called as xenogenic stem cells which is taken from the different species. So that is called as xenogenic, right. So among this, these are the two ways to classify the stem cells. Among this totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, okay, and which one is used for the research purpose? Which one is used for the research purpose? Usually if you take the totipotent, or pluripotent stem cells I told you these are rich in where these are rich in embryo so on the cells you have to kill the embryo then how so ethical clearance doesn't allow to do research work on totipotent and pluripotent stem cells Emanka and colleagues Okay, what they did is they did extensive research and came up with a good idea, right? Stom somatic, even a normal somatic stem cells, not stem cells, sorry, normal somatic cells which can be transferred into a pluripotent stem cells, which can be transferred into a pluripotent stem cells because pluripotent stem cells and this totipotent stem cells are not allowed by as like an ethical clearance. So they convert the somatic into pluripotent stem cells. These are called as induced pluripotent stem cells. Induced pluripotent stem cells. But everybody was happy with this. Everybody was happy. Once the they formed this induced pluripotent stem cell, they created a pluripotent stem cells from the somatic. It was a great success. But after that, when the induced pluripotent stem cells was implanted in the particular human being, it does not have proliferative control. What does that mean? It just proliferate more. It just proliferate more and it may cause teratoma in the particular human being. So, again it went back failure. So, for a research purpose, finally they take in these type of cells. What is this type of cells are? Adult mesenchymal cells. So, these type of cells have proliferation control. That means it can differentiate into only for a particular type of cells. So, which cells are taken for the research purpose? If they ask in exam and given you options like totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, the best example is and so far this is multipotent, multipotent uh, nothing but adult mesenchymal cells. So usually these mesenchymal cells are rich in which area? That is the next question. These mesenchymal cells are rich in orofacial region. So if you see this, these are best example for adult mesenchymal cells. So number one, these are called as bone marrow stem cell. This is called as periodontal ligament stem cell. Okay. This is called as inflammatory periapical progenitor cells. It mean it is present in a periapical region which is already inflamed. So the stem cells are called as inflamed periapical progenitor cells. And this type of stem cells which is so important 
okay which is present in the apical papilla so this is called as stem cells from the apical papilla and these stem cells are present in the salivary gland so this is called salivary gland stem cells and this is what called as present in a follicle so this is called as dental follicle stem cells right and this is called as dental pulp stem cells and this is called as stem cells from the human exfoliated deciduous teeth so these are the various type of stem cells but what is very useful very helpful in the regenerative anodontics okay if you ask me this is the first one stem cells from the apical papilla and this is the number two dental pulp stem cells and this is number three induced sorry inflamed periapical progenitor cells and even this periodontal ligament stem cells and this is the order I can say okay and but but in case of which is the best cell to harvest harvest okay mean easily taken means the most important cell is dental pulp stem cell is the most easily taken easily harvested so this is the question which is asked in PGH Chandigarh 2017 and 2018 consecutively two years they asked the same question which is the stem cell easily harvesting answer is dental pulp stem cells right so now we go for one by one about these stem cells the first stem cells I told which is very important which is called as scap stem cells from the apical papilla which was first characterized in the year 2006 right so where the stem cells are present this is present in the this area right apical papilla right so this is apical papilla okay when it is a non-vital I told you this is a non-vital case image so non-vital means it like has a it has a lesion it has the lesion right so more of inflammation I mean more of inflammatory mediators the tissue is in a hypoxic condition so usually in a hypoxic condition cells are not able to survive but then how these scap cells are survive so this is a good question so usually cells are not survive in a hypoxic condition so this is the area of the inflammation where there are more of inflammatory mediators no blood supply so it's a hypoxic condition then how the scap cells are survived then they did the research and found out that these stem cells okay like love hypoxia hypoxia in case of the hypoxia the stem cells are proliferate more than a non hypoxic condition proliferate organize and differentiate so all this which is more in a hypoxic condition so that is the reason why it is just to survive even in a hypoxic condition right this is the first type of cell the second type of cell which is called as inflamed periapical progenitor cells usually it is present in the in, in uh, like non-vital teeth in a periapical region and the next type of stem cells which is called as very important dental pulp stem cells easily harvested stem cells okay and these stem cells are like dental pulp stem cells are either it is derived from the shed what is the meaning of shed stem cells from human exfoliated deciduous teeth mean once the deciduous teeth is extracted so these dental pulp stem cells can be harvested from that number one number two if any teeth are removed for the orthodontic purpose then you can use those teeth for derived the dental pulp stem cells so now you know what are the types of the stem cells and what are the importance of this second important component in the regenerative endodontics is growth factors so what is this growth factor these growth factors are nothing but these are proteins which just attach to the receptor on the stem cells helps for the proliferation and differentiation of the stem cells so the function of growth factor is proliferation and differentiation of stem cells right and where this growth factor comes 
the growth factors either which is injected along with the scaffold number one or the growth factors comes from the dentin which is present from the root canal there are so many type of growth factors which helps for the regenerative purpose to start with this so number one which is called as bmp bone morphogenic protein which is so important number two colony stimulating factor which helps for the proliferation of the stem cells especially this pluripotent stem cells and number three epidermal growth factor and number four fibroblast growth factor and number five insulin like growth factors and number six interleukin interleukin 1 to interleukin 13 and what is it meaning of interleukin leukin means what leukocytes the leukocytes which are communicate with each other with the help of this molecule called as interleukin as like what we studied for the microorganisms which are communicated with each other by a mechanism called as quorum sensing and the next is about platelet derived growth factor and this is so important transforming growth factor alpha and transforming growth factor beta these are the growth factor generally used for the regeneration but coming to the factors among these factors what are the factors which helps for the regenerative endodontics so that is so important if you see the transforming growth factor alpha and beta this beta is so important for the purpose of regenerative endodontics so this is just taken from the Cohen what Cohen says these are important growth factors which are helps for the regenerative endodontics so first three types which is transforming growth factor beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 and coming to the bone morphogenic protein 2 4 7 and they may ask you which bone morphogenic protein does not helps for the regenerative endodontics they may give an option like 2 4 7 6 like 8 like that so if you know this you can able to answer for those type of question next is about insulin like growth factor 1 and 2 next is about hepatocyte growth factor vascular endothelial growth factor and adrenulomedullin so these are some of the growth factor i just repeat one more time transforming growth factor beta not alpha 1 2 3 and what about bone morphogenic protein 2 4 7 and insulin like growth factor 1 and 2 number 4 hepatocyte growth factor number 5 vascular endothelial growth factor and number 6 adrenomedullin so these are the growth factor which helps for regenerative endodontics right where this growth factor comes from this growth factor comes from nothing but root canal from the dentin right so how it will be induced so during the regenerative endodontics or revascularization procedure you are irrigating the root canal with the sodium hypochlorite uh, the second appointment you are doing the irrigation with the EDTA this EDTA removes the calcium deposition mean this act as a chelating agent which opens the dentinal tubules because the dentinal tubules are open the growth factor which is present in the dentin just come into the root canal okay and helps for the stem cells proliferation and differentiation right so either these growth factors comes from this irrigation purpose or even if you do the etching, etching of the dentin, the growth factors are released. Or when you place the calcium hydroxide, this calcium hydroxide attracts the growth factor. So these are some of the ways you can increase the growth factors in the root canal, which helps helps for the regenerative endodontics. Right. So remember, also sometimes. Uh, like irritation like care is also causes release of growth factor from the dentin. the next important factor so now we studied about stem cells second is about scaffold and the third part is about scaff sorry second is about growth factor and third is about scaffold right so what is this scaffold scaffold is nothing but it is a three-dimensional structure scaffold is nothing but it is a three dimensional structure which helps for organization of stem cells 
which helps for organization of stem cells and it also helps for vascularization vascularization of the stem cells and usually it is porous in nature ideally it should be porous how do you classify the scaffold so the scaffolds are classified either as a natural or a synthetic example for the natural scaffold are number one collagen number two fibronectin chitosan prp that is platelet rich plasma and number five platelet rich fibrin these are natural scaffolds and the example for the synthetic which are again classified into polymers and bioceramics right and examples for the polymers are number one polylactic acid polyglycolic acid and polycaprolactone example for bioceramics are bioactive glass or calcium or phosphate rich materials so this is one way to classify the scaffold right so among this these are called as sorry these are the like prp like platelet rich plasma and platelet rich fibrin even in case of the revascularization endodontics the clot formation so these are called as these are called as autologous stem cells what is the meaning of autologous these platelet rich fibrin platelet rich plasma which is taken from the same individual and it is used for the regenerative endodontics so that's why these are called as autologous next to see with one of the most commonly used autologous scaffold is platelet rich fibrin this platelet rich fibrin which was introduced by a person called as saukran number 1 and it contain more of platelets as the name itself says it is a platelet rich fibrin platelets and it also contains cytokines this platelet rich fibrin which helps for migration of fibroblast and endothelial cells migration of fibroblast and endothelial cells so this is what you have to know related to the platelet rich fibrin and coming to the next type of our classification of scaffold is based on the form number 1 solid blocks sheets porous sponge and hydrogels so based on the form the scaffolds are classified like this and like a presence or absence of cell it is classified into scaffold with the stem cells and the cells are removed and it is called as decellularized scaffold right now see go for the ideal properties of the scaffold so it should be have some nutrition right should be having some nutrition to provide the nutrition for the stem cells and it should have antibiotics to prevent unwanted entry of the bacteria number 2 it should have some mechanical strength right and it should be biodegradable ideally it should be biodegradable right why should be biodegradable only if it is biodegradable okay once the stem cells proliferate it gives space for the stem cells to occupy okay only if the scaffold will degrade the stem cells will occupy that place okay if it is not biodegradable the stem cells doesn't have space for the proliferation so that's why always the biodegradable scaffold is much ideal than non biodegradable scaffold so and also it should be the rate the rate of stem cell formation is equal to the biodegradation of the scaffold and more importantly it should have high porosity high porosity as i told you only if it is porous there is a seeding of the stem cells into the particular pore area and also this porosity which gives a diffusion of the nutrients so one of the very important scaffold which is called as hydrogels 
what is that meaning of hydrogel split the term hydro means hydrophilic gel it is in colloidal consistency because it is a hydrophilic it absorb water more than the weight of the scaffold material and because it absorb water it became colloidal in consistency this colloidal forms can be injected even in the narrow root canal right and this is a very important biocompatible material when compared to other type of scaffold so this is the advantages of the hydrogels when compared to the other type of scaffolds the next type which is called as decellularized scaffold what does it mean see the terminology remove the cellular part so that means minimize the cell part maximize the extra cellular matrix why do you want to minimize the cellular part usually the cell part which act as immunogenic immunogenic right so this immunogenic reasons may go for rejection of the scaffold along with the stem cells that is the reason you are minimizing the cell part can you give some examples for this decellularized scaffold material yes number 1 dermal allograft dermal allograft number 2 human peripheral nerve number 3 porcine small intestine submucosa and number 4 porcine urinary bladder so these are some of the best examples i can give it for decellularized scaffold material so till now we studied about three important things or three important components in the regenerative analytics number one stem cells what are the type of stem cells number two growth factors the type of growth factors and number three scaffolds and type of the scaffolds now coming to the delivery of the component into the root canal right either you can inject the scaffold alone or scaffold with growth factors and stem cells right whatever may be there is a question what is the question so if this is the tooth and it has a open apex right and if you inject this scaffold into the root canal right and what will be the blood supply for this cells to survive stem cells to survive because in our body everywhere if you take a particular cell if you take a particular cell this is just close to the blood vessel 0.12 maximum of 1 mm right but here if you inject the cellular part or the scaffold part and there is a inflammation in the periapical region no proper blood supply then how the stem cells survive for as i told you the answer in the earlier part of my some lecture right so usually the stem cells in a hypoxic condition grow well it produces more proliferation and differentiation in a hypoxic condition produces more blood vessels that means angiogenic there is a growth factor called vascular endothelial growth factor which is released in the hypoxic condition helps for the stem cells proliferation so that is the reason even if the distance is higher that means more than 1 mm the stem cells are survived in the root canal and helps for the regeneration and there is a one more way which is called as cell homing so what is that mean cell homing usually when the stem cells are injected okay this is injected along with a factor called as chemotactic factor what does it mean chemotactic factor which attract the chemical which is needed for the proliferation of the stem cells so this is what called as cell homing right so 
till now we studied about the components of a regenerative endodontics now coming to the type of the regenerative endodontics there are various types of the regenerative endodontics number one which is most commonly used clinically nowadays about root canal revascularization even the mcqs are framed more from this topic okay and we will see this topic in detail the second thing which is called as stem cell therapy these stem cells just injected into the root canal and the third is which is called as pulp implant so the pulp tissue which is grown outside in the laboratory and injected into the root canal this is also one of the type of regenerative endodontics the third is scaffold implant the scaffold along with the pulp cells which is injected into the root canal and the third next is about 3d cell printing that is there is a device called as ink jet like device which dispenses the i told you the hydrogel right this hydrogel which is injected and there is a one more type as such called as injectable scaffold so here also it is called as polymerizable hydrogels which is injected into the root canal and the last one is about gene therapy so how the questions will be framed from this topic right they may ask you all these are regenerative endodontic procedure except right so they may give an option like gene therapy injectable scaffold stem cell therapy and apexogenesis so what will be your answer apexogenesis it is not a type of regenerative endodontics right apexogenesis is then in white tail teeth okay but usually in the regenerative endodontics which is done in non white tail teeth so this is asked in one of the recent examination coming to the most commonly used regenerative endodontic procedure which is called as revascularization right so what are the cases I mean what are the indications of revascularization as i told you the cases of immature non vital teeth immature non vital teeth and number 2 the patient should have good periodontal support good periodontal support no bleeding or clotting disorders and the patient should not have any allergic to antibiotics so these are the indications of the procedure called as revascularization what about the contraindication the contraindications are in case if the patient is medically compromised if the teeth is avulsed why the avulsed teeth is contraindicated for regenerative endodontics because avulsed teeth the regeneration is possible as a natural phenomenon okay you need not to do any process for the avulsed teeth and in case if the isolation is not possible then the regenerative endodontics is contraindicated right so with this the regenerative i mean revascularization endodontics which is done in a two step procedure the first step procedure when the patient comes you have to give a informed consent to the patient so what are the things about the informed consent number one we have to tell about the number of appointments usually the revascularization endodontics which require two appointments number two the possible adverse effect of revascularization what are the possible adverse effect because in a revascularization you are introducing you are giving triple antibiotic paste so the component in a triple antibiotic paste may cause us discoloration so this has to be explained to the patient and you also have to be tell in case if the patient some patients are not response to the treatment for the revascularization that also explain to the patient and alternative treatments like apexification how to tell to the patient and what are the possible post treatment symptoms uh, in case if the revascularization go for failure so this is what you have to tell to the patient in a informed consent then local anesthesia should be given usually the local anesthesia which is mepivacaine is given for the revascularization procedure without any adrenaline and rubber dam is given 
once the rubber dam is given working length is determined 1 millimeter from the root apex so which type of working length determination cannot be useful in revascularization yes you are right apex locator cannot be used why because it is an open apex right because it is an open apex you can either go for a place a file inside the root canal with the stopper okay and checking the working length so there is a one more method which is called as paper point method so this paper point method also used for determination of the working length in case of the open apex once you determine the working length then you can go for the biomechanical preparation right in case of the biomechanical preparation there is a minimal preparation of the root canal with the file okay but more amount of irrigation should be done so what is the irrigation solution used in the first appointment according to Cohen what he is a sodium hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite 1.5 percentage more concentration more it is cytotoxic so that is the reason why you use 1.5 percentage sodium hypochlorite how much ml 20 ml per canal for 5 minutes followed by you have to irrigate with the saline for the neutralization of the effect of the sodium hypochlorite right and one more thing which you have to know is this is what given in the cohen in case if you see the grossman he added edta even in the first appointment right so you have to know both but answer more to the more accordingly to the cohen in case if there is a question asked in your NEET exam or INISET examination because mostly the questions are framed from Cohen and next once you irrigate the canal and now the canal is dried with paper point now place the triple antibiotic paste okay and what is the concentration of triple antibiotic paste 1 to 10 milligram per ml so that is the concentration of triple antibiotic paste should be used or you can use the calcium hydroxide also right so what is this triple antibiotic paste so it is a combination of ciprofloxacin number one number two metronidazole and number three minocycline why do you want these three antibiotics not one so this three antibiotics which is called produces something called as synergistic effect synergistic effect is combination of the antibiotic which gives more effect than the antibiotics which are used separately so that is called as synergistic effect so once you place the triple antibiotic paste inside the root canal the root canal access is temporarily closed and you can ask the patient to come after two to four weeks once the patient comes after two to four weeks the second visit you have to check a patient is having any swelling or sinus tract if there is a swelling and if the patient doesn't show any improvement so do the procedure what you done in the first visit again okay or if the patient does not have any swelling patient is absolutely normal okay not no symptoms okay then give the local anesthesia without adrenaline the local anesthesia which we use is three percentage may be okay isolation of the particular tooth with the rubber dam now this intracanal medicament is removed with 17 percentage edta followed by the saline so this edta which have one more function which opens the retinal tubules so all the growth factors comes inside the root canals now the canals is dried with a paper point now place a 25 size 5 inside the root canal go beyond apex of the working length 2 millimeter beyond the working length okay just pick the periapical region induce the bleeding so this bleeding when it comes inside the root canal just wait for some time till it reaches the cemento enamel junction or just to 2 to 3 millimeter apical to the cemento enamel junction okay right so 
So this is the open epix case, right? So induce the bleeding. Once the bleeding comes inside the root canal, okay, and just stop the bleeding two to three mm from the cemento enamel junction. Wait for the clot formation. Then over that cola plug will be applied over the blood clot. So this cola plug acts as a base for the overlying MTA material. So now just over that MTA will be placed. Over the cola plug, MTA is placed, and over that you just place the GAC. Okay. Then, if needed, fill it with a composite restoration. Then, follow up procedure for the revascularization at three months and six months, and after that, and yearly. So, this is what you have to done in the first visit and second visit of the regenerative endodontics right once you done all these procedures okay completed so what are the things which you have to check in the treatment outcome so the treatment outcome is classified based on the patient clinician and scientist what the patient see resolution of the disease the patient should be asymptomatic and also should not cause any discoloration because of the minocycline and also because of the MTA. So usually MTA when you place either a grey MTA, white MTA, both causes discoloration. Many of the people think like grey MTA only causes discoloration. Even white MTA causes discoloration but the comparatively it causes less discoloration than the grey MTA. So there should not be no discoloration, patient should be completely free from the symptoms. And what the clinician see? The clinician will see increased thickness and length of the root and there is a healing in the radiograph and there should be a positive vitality. Right. And what do the scientists see? The histological evidence of the complete regeneration. So this is the evidence according to the scientist. So these are the possible outcomes or treatment outcomes for the regenerative endodontics for successful. Right. Now we are going to see some of the images which is important in this chapter. The first image is about how do we prepare platelet rich fibrin? So, as I told you, platelet rich plasma and platelet rich fibrin both are autologous stem cell source. Right. How this platelet rich fibrin is prepared? So, patient's own intravenous blood is collected and put it in the centrifugation, which is at the speed of 3000 rpm for 10 minutes. Once you centrifuge, you will get three layers. So the bottom most one is which is called RBC, the upper most which is called as plasma, and the middle one which is called as fibrin clot. This fibrin clot is nothing but PRF, platelet-rich fibrin. This platelet-rich fibrin which is used in the regenerative endodontic purpose. Right. Once you just got this. PRF that is platelet rich fibrin just take it and it cut it from the RBC and put it in the metal container compress it and you may get the membrane like this. These membrane which is used for the regenerative endodontics right. So the next picture is about how the mechanism of regenerative endodontics work. So this is the root canal which is in the pink color. So this brown color which is about dentine, right? So nothing but dentine matrix. Once you irrigate and place an intracanal medicament, so this will just opens the dentinal tubules. And this open the dentinal tubules, those bioactive molecules which comes inside the root canal, these molecules which helps for number one chemotaxis. 
what is the meaning of chemotaxis attraction of the chemicals inside the root canal which is called as chemotaxis number 2 angiogenesis that is formation of the blood vessel neurogenesis formation of the nerves and it also helps for the mineralization of the dentin so because of this bioactive molecule and the chemotaxis all the cells which is called apical mesenchymal stem cells this will be attracted inside the root canal we will go and just adhere to inside the root canal and you can expect some amount of blood vessels and nerves in the formation of the regeneration so this is one more picture which I have to know so there is a one more picture this is what called as apical papilla so in case of the regenerative endodontics when you prick this area with the file this causes the laceration of this area so those stem cells which is present in this which is called as cap the stem cells in the apical papilla which is called as cap this cap which comes inside the root canal and helps for the regeneration right and the next one is about stages of the root development so one thing which we studied in pedo which is called as nulla stages of the root development here in the regenerative anodontics we are going to see one more type of uh, staging right in the staging if you see you have six stages very easy to remember stage one is one fourth of the root development stage two is of the root development so this is one 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 of and this is one fourth one by two and three fourth and there is a full development but with the open apex so i just repeat one more time this is one fourth of the root development this is 1 by 2 of the root development, this is 3 by 4th of the root development, this is the complete development of the root, stage 1, 2, 3, 4, but in the stage 4, still you have the open apex, in stage 5, you have the full development of the root with the partially closed apex, stage 6 is the complete root development with the closed apex. So if they ask you what is called a stage 5 or uh, what is called a stage 3 which you have to know to answer for this type of question right and the next is about what is the treatment outcome don't confuse this diagram with the previous diagram so this is not about staging this is about type type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 okay and this is about staging so what are the possible treatment outcomes in a regenerative endodontics. The possible treatment outcomes are type 1 where there is a root development with closed apex with apex closure ok and what is type 2 there is a root development with there is no root closure and what is type 3? Type 3 is there is a no root development, no root development, but there is apical closure. Just opposite of type 2. And type 4 is no root development, no apical closure. So if they give you some pictures like what is type 1 or what is type 4 in the treatment outcome of regenerative endodontics, that you have to answer for these type of questions. Right. Now coming to the most important part in the lecture which is called as ardent flash. In this ardent flash all the things what we study till now which is combined together and given in a single slide. So this is about the types of the stem cells in the picture form diagrammatic representation. You have various type of stem cells like scab pedial stem cells, bone marrow stem cells, shed and you have salivary gland stem cells there are so many types of stem cells first component the second component which is called as growth factor and the third component which is called as scaffold which is classified into either natural or synthetic in case of the revascularization procedure what are the 
things to be done in the first appointment and the second appointment which is explained here take a pass and just go through it and this is according to the gross man irrigation with 1.5 percentage sodium hypochlorite for 5 minutes followed by saline and 17 percentage EDTA which won't be there in the cohen which won't be there in the cohen about EDTA in the first appointment cohen says EDTA which is used only in the second appointment right and what about this triple antibiotic paste the triple antibiotic paste are ciprofloxacin metanidazole and minocycline okay and if you over concern patient is over concerned about the discoloration you can avoid this minocycline now it is called as double antibiotic paste or the minocycline which is replaced with one more antibiotic called as cefaclor cefaclor this cefaclor when you replace that is called as modified triple antibiotic paste so this is what you have to know related to the regenerative antibiotics hope it is very useful for you